what's up you guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be my first ever get unready with me on this channel i'm going to be taking off my makeup whilst answering some very juicy questions that y'all sent me on instagram so i'm looking at the questions right now we about to get into it today i might need a whole entire separate video to answer a few of these questions i'm seeing but i definitely want to hear you guys' thoughts on the things we discussed today so make sure you leave your comments down below and on that note, let's take off this makeup and get into these questions. <sighs> now it's time to wash off this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful face of makeup. Can you believe I didn't film this look? I am so mad at myself. Like I cannot believe I didn't film this look. Let me know if y'all want me to film this look. I'd be happy to redo it again. Let's just hope it comes out just as beautiful next time. So I'm going to start with my pharmacy cleansing balm. Now let's get into some skincare. As of lately, my skin has been feeling super clogged and congested. So I'm gonna reach for this Fenty Skin Cherry Dub Mask. This mask is super great for removing the look of dullness from your skin and removing any impurities from within your pores. The key ingredient in this mask is actually salicylic acid, which is known for unclogging your pores. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that all over my face and let it sit for a couple minutes before washing it off. Now this next product, oh my goodness. I had no idea how badly I needed a toner in my routine until I started using the Glow Recipe Cloudberry Toner. I don't know if y'all can tell, but the bottle is halfway empty because of how much I use this stuff. One thing I love about this product is that it's packed with vitamin C, which of course helps with brightness and reducing dullness in the skin. But another thing I love about this product is that the key ingredient CoQ10 actually boosts the effectiveness of other products in your routine. So if you use this alongside any other active in your skincare routine you get to maximize their potential now it's time to bring some moisture back into the skin so i'm going to take my skin fix collagen activating serum y'all know i just turned 25 and supposedly after 25 is when your skin starts to lose its collagen so i'm trying to preserve as much of it as i can as possible which is why i love using this product not only is it great for visibly plumper skin but it also supports your skin barrier which is very important especially if you find yourself using a lot of actives in your skincare routine and last but definitely not least i'm going to take my laneige water bank cream moisturizer to lock all of this skincare goodness in. This product is packed with ceramides that also support a healthy skin barrier, as well as an ingredient called blue hyaluronic acid, which also visibly plumps the skin. Overall, I am so happy with how these products have improved the look of my skin. Each of them targets multiple skincare concerns of mine at once, which is more than I can ask for. And if you guys would like to try these products out for yourselves, they are all available at Sephora. Skincare is done. I'm in my comfortable PJs and we're about to get into this Q&A. I have my dinner here ready. I'm gonna answer these questions. So I guess this is kind of like a mukbang. I haven't done a mukbang in a long time. If you've been here for a while, I mean like 2017, 2016 days, you will remember the mukbang era, which was so cringy. But I guess we're gonna bring it back. Like I said earlier, I asked you guys on Instagram and I've been scrolling through them low key and I'm like, dang, these are some heavy hitter questions. So I'm gonna try and hit each of them to the best of my abilities without you know overdoing it but some of these questions like i feel like they deserve a full video on its own so if you guys would like to see a video based on any of the questions that you hear me answer make sure you comment down below because i'd be happy to elaborate on a lot of these things because i love when y'all send me juicy questions <laughs> First question, how is Mimi? Mimi is doing very swell. She actually today got a bunch of vaccines at once. And I feel for the girl, man, because I see why they take your pets to the back when they're handling them. Because watching it in front of me today, like I literally was on the brink of tears. Like I was trying with everything in me to not start crying because I did not want to look like that pet mom. But watching her get those vaccines, y'all, like, Plus she had to get a microchip and if you know anything about a microchip needle it is huge so just seeing her like squirm and scream like i could not handle it but 
Besides that, alhamdulillah, she's doing so good. She's literally doubled in size since her last doctor's visit, which was a month ago. She was three pounds at that appointment, and today she was six pounds. So she's eating good, she's healthy, and I just love her more and more every single day. Next question, how to get over a boy? I will need to elaborate a lot more but there's also so many complexities like it depends on what kind of relationship you have with this boy did you even have a relationship with this boy like i need context you know but the general thing i would say is to of course go no contact if you really want to get over somebody out of sight out of mind okay so you cannot see them you cannot talk to them you cannot be in any type of discussions with them now i know there's some complex situations where people be in the same class, same job, but if you have the option, I would say no contact completely. And then you need to get started on that healing, okay? Healing can look a lot of different ways. Some people go to therapy, some people pray, some people spend more time with their family and immerse themselves in community, but just avoid busying away your time so that you don't have to think about it. Like actively allow yourself to feel what you need to feel because the more you suppress it and push it off, the longer the process will be for you. Oh my goodness. I knew this was a bad idea. I can't wear these Peters to bed anymore. I just got food all over them. Next question is what are some of your favorite hijab brands? I would say the ones that I wear most frequently are from Asumaya Shop. Actually, when I first started my hijab journey, I made a big order from Asumaya Shop and I just bought a bunch of jersey hijabs because I knew I loved jersey. And that is basically what I started my journey on. And I was just wearing her hijabs. And then over time, I got a lot of gifted hijabs. So I got some gifted hijabs from Adekami, which is is actually owned by my girl Mutia. If you're watching this, hey girl. I also got some hijab sent to me by Culture Hijab, which I really, really love their quality. Oh my God, so many small businesses that have sent me hijabs, which thank you so much. I can't remember them all off the top of my head. All right, let me go ahead and get a bite of this because I don't want to be rude and talk <laughs> with my mouth full. Hold up, I didn't even show you all the food. How rude of me. Literally, yum. Mm. How do you feel about being the only full hijabi woman in your family? This question is actually from my cousin Ayomide. And yeah, fun fact, hijab is not like very... I, I might be the I don't think I'm the first in my family because I have a huge family, but not many of my cousins or my aunties wear the hijab. Like I don't think, I can think of one cousin on my dad's side. Nobody wears it on my mom's side. Two cousins on my dad's side. I could be wrong, there could be more people, but no one like in my intimate family really wears hijab. My mom covers her hair, but she doesn't officially call herself a hijabi. I don't know, like it just feels like divine timing because it feels like I'm meant to be like this. Like I feel like I'm supposed to wear the hijab. So it doesn't affect me much that there isn't a lot of hijabi representation around me. Although I'd love if more people in my family wore it or just like if I had friends who wore it, but I'm not like very affected by it because it just feels like this is my identity. Like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I really would love to have more friends who wear the hijab though. I don't think I, do I have any? I don't have any close friends who wear the hijab and I'd love to have close friends who wear the hijab. So yeah. That's crazy. I'm thinking like I have hijabi friends, but I'm just thinking about the people I follow on Instagram. Like I don't really actually know them in real life, but that's why social media, like your timeline, your for you page, it can either make or break you. Like the people you watch, the content you consume, like you have to be so careful about it because it can either reinforce who you are and how you feel about yourself, or it can tear you down and make you question yourself, question your beauty, question your self worth. Like almost my entire for you page and timeline is hijabi women. So I don't feel that lack in my real life because everyone I'm following or almost everyone I'm following wears a hijab. So it doesn't feel so weird to me that I'm the only person in real life. So make sure you curate your social media followings to really reflect who you are, how you feel about yourself, who you wanna be, cause I'm telling you, what you consume both in your mouth and through your eyes really, really does make an impact on your life. Has dating changed for you since wearing hijab and increasing your faith? Absolutely. There's no way I can describe this without describing it from an Islamic standpoint, but essentially dating in Western terms, you know, what dating would consist of in the West is considered forbidden in Islam. So as Muslims, we are not supposed to 
date the way Western people date. So dating has definitely changed for me. I think around the time that I decided to wear the hijab, I also decided like, cause you know, hijab is not just your outer appearance, it's your inside too. So dating has definitely changed for me. Now there's a lot more boundaries. There's a lot more strict rules you're gonna have to follow before you talk to me. I'll have to do a video on this guys, but I've definitely seen both sides. And I feel safer on this side. I feel safer doing it God's way. So let me know if you guys would want to see a video on that because I'd be happy to talk about that more. Okay, next question. Give us some glow up tips on how to become that girl and also be productive. Ooh. Mmm. Well, glowing up can mean different things for everybody. So I don't know what exactly you mean by glowing up, whether you mean physically. Let me look at the question again. You said how to become that girl, which is also very um vague because that girl looks different for everybody but you also mentioned becoming productive and one thing that's helped me become productive is let me just go get it for y'all let me go get it one thing that has helped me become a productive babe is this book right here atomic habits by james clear yeah you need this if you're trying to learn to stack habits live a more you know structured lifestyle and really see your goals come into fruition you need that book, okay? I naturally, like in my nature, I'm a very fluid, flexible kind of person. And I still am, and I still live by that to a certain extent. But this book definitely helped me apply the level of structure that I need to have in my life in order to become my version of that girl. It really depends on what your goals are and what it is you're trying to achieve. But any goal can be achieved in small increments, in small everyday habits, in small decisions you make Every single day, they add up to something. So whether you're thinking about it consciously or subconsciously, every single little thing you do repeatedly, it adds up to something, okay? If you keep putting pennies in a piggy bank, you're gonna have a full piggy bank one day. So that applies to your habits as well and the things you allow yourself to do. So that book really, really helped put that into perspective for me. And I actually read it like two years ago, but shout out to my girl Love Daisy because she gifted this to me. So I have two of them now. And it's honestly just prompted me to start reading it again because I, Think it's just one of those books like you, you gotta read it you have to is there food on my face next question i want to build a strong relationship with god slash allah any tips i'm assuming you're muslim because you said allah we all know the basics your five daily prayers you cannot miss out on those if you want to develop a closer relationship with allah simply doing what you are asked to do the bare minimum asked for us as muslims is so 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 important and so so crucial for you to be able to move to the next level of developing a relationship with allah so make sure you're doing your five daily prayers make sure you're fasting during ramadan make sure you are meeting the minimum requirements now as someone who does not speak Arabic and someone who has not memorized the Quran or the meaning It can be difficult to feel that same connection as someone who may have memorized it and fully understands the meaning So that is where I like to take initiative and bring God into my day-to-day -day activities So I make dua continuously throughout the day before I cook a meal I make dua before I drive out the house I make dua while I'm driving I'm talking to God about the things I want the things I'm grateful for the things I'd like to see in fruition happen in my life I'm constantly in conversation with Allah and I think that has single-handedly transformed my relationship with him because he's no longer as scary to me when I treat him like he is always here because he is always here so invite Allah into your day-to-day -day activities if you're about to do an assignment and ask God to help you ace that assignment. If you're about to do a workout, ask God to help you kill that workout and not injure none of your muscles or tear any ligaments. <laughs> but essentially, like, God is always listening. He's always there. So I encourage you to bring him into every single little thing that you find yourself doing within your day, even if it's mundane. And trust me, your relationship with him will completely transform. Like, how else do you build relationships with other people? It's through talking. It's through learning about them. That's another thing. I would highly recommend the same things that apply to our relationships amongst people it applies to Allah as well so if you want to gain a better relationship with someone you get to know them you talk to them you are constantly in conversation with them the same thing applies to God so you want to make sure that you're inviting God into your day-to-day -day activities and you're talking to him and you're getting to know him and I promise you y'all gonna be locked in like this someone asked how to be independent whilst having Nigerian parents if only y'all knew what I went through to get to where I am today. I was in the trenches. I don't know if I ever came to YouTube and told you guys, but 
Um, my mom is very strict, or was very strict, to the point that when I first went to college, I had to call her every single day, every single day. On top of that, she had the strict rule for me that I am not allowed outside of my dorm, three hours away from home. I'm not allowed to leave my dorm after Maghrib every single night. So she either call me, text me, something to make sure that I'm in the dorm by that time. We came a long way. I think there needs to come a time where you either, like you show your parents that you're not the baby that they think you are anymore. Take this with a grain of salt, first of all. Take this with a grain of salt. I'm not telling you to go disrespect your parents. What I'm saying is there needs to come a moment where they see with their own eyes that, okay, this is not a child anymore. She's able to make decisions for herself and we did a good job with her. It depends, like your age, your experiences, if you've had hiccups in the past that made them lose trust in you, because I definitely had my my fair share of hiccups that made them the way they were with me. People's Nigerian parents be varying on strictness. Like most people would say my mom is not strict, but it took a while to get here. What advice would you give to a teen girl entering their early 20s slash womanhood? That's a really good question. I would say do not compromise your values for anyone and by anyone i literally mean anyone i mean your friends i mean your crush i mean your peers like it doesn't matter your values are your values and if people do not align with that or people do not understand that like you do not need to dim them down change them tweak them to meet anybody's needs because at the end of the day like we are all flawed humans none of us have come to this life before we're all figuring it out for the first time. Who are they to be worthy of you changing up what your core beliefs are, you know? So I would say just be 10 toes down in what you believe. Like your feet need to be deep in the soil and don't let anybody tug you right, left, or make you believe that where you are and what you believe in is not good enough. I think that's the biggest thing because around that age, you're old enough to be treated you know like you're grown but you're still a baby at the same time like you don't know anything even now like i'm mid-20s officially i still don't know anything y'all hear me talking talk because i don't know nothing okay y'all i must have been real disrespectful in the past because i don't know how i did these mukbangs i probably was eating and chewing and smacking in y'all's faces and i'm so sorry but I feel like I need to breathe first take a bite and then answer a question so that's what i'm gonna do how do you feel with your new age? I think I answered that in the last question. I feel like a baby. I don't feel like what I thought 25 year olds were when I was like 15. I feel like a five year old adult. Five is even pushing it. I feel like a three year old adult. Ooh, this is a good question. Somebody said, I'm a Muslim girl and I have a crush. How can I deal with it? First of all, this is so cute. Crushes are so cute. I feel like I haven't had a crush in a very long time. Um, crushes are very cute though, and they should be dealt with in the correct manner. This is the Muslim part of me coming out. You obviously know your limits, you know your boundaries. I would start by making dua. I would start by making dua. I would start by bringing it to God and ask him like, God, I feel a way about this, this, this particular person, and I just want to know like, is it something worth pursuing in the halal manner, or is it something that I need to just let it go because the thing with crushes they feel very intense in the moment but they don't actually hold any solid standing in your life like you feel this way one day and then you feel different the next day it's not really rooted in anything most times when you have a crush it's not someone you actually know so it's not like genuine you know so i would say pray about it pray and see if it's something worth like pursuing or exploring and if it's looking like it's not then just keep faith and know that your man is coming and you're gonna have an even bigger crush on him because it's gonna be right <laughs> did you ever feel like your skin made you ugly lived in a racist community so i think this person is saying they live in a racist community and they may struggle with the way they see their skin i wouldn't go as far as to say ugly but i've definitely had experiences that have made me feel like my skin is less than living in a household with a light-skinned mother and a light-skinned sister being nigerian at that i'm sure you guys can sense the direction i'm heading i've definitely had my fair share of experiences where i felt kind of invisible especially when we were young and we'd go to nigeria um 
Mimi, don't start. Don't start. Yeah, like we would go to Nigeria and I'd be like invisible and everybody would be crazy about my little sister. Of course, she's very light skinned, she's very fair in complexion. At a young age, like that definitely like affected me because I, I, I was just like, we literally come from the same parents. But it came down to colorism. I just had to grow up and realize like I've only been given one set of skin in this life and I either better accept it, embrace it, love it, or I'll live my life constantly upset that I'm not being validated for it. And again, like when it comes to validation, like we all have to remind ourselves, who are we craving validation from? Like who is it that we are hoping to see us and acknowledge us and call us beautiful and pretty? Like these are other humans, other flawed humans, other people who are trying to figure it out just like you, like especially men. Basically just tell y'all that we should not be looking for validation amongst other flawed individuals like ourselves. Maybe if there was a perfect human being, you can go and ask them for their validation and what they think, but there is no such thing. Except for the Prophet Muhammad So, um, with that being said, like it's just so much safer to seek validation from your creator, from God, and knowing that God created you perfectly, created you exactly how you're supposed to be, like, I think that just reinforces that whatever complexion you came in, you're beautiful. You're you're who you are meant to be. And you're exactly how Allah destined you to be. So I think that's beautiful. I think that's one way to deal with feeling less than or feeling like you may have, you know, insecurities as a result of your complexion. Like you've got to turn off the noise, turn off the music, turn off the movies, turn off Hollywood, turn off pop culture, turn off people you cannot be guided or led or seeking validation from people like just remember yourself and your flaws and you know your deficiencies your limitations all the things that make you human and then remember that everybody else that you are waiting for praise and a validation from are exactly like that they are no more special than you so when you put when you put that into perspective like it really honestly makes it so hard to even want validation or want to be deemed as beautiful by other people like it's just kind of like a thing where you don't gotta see my skin the way I see it, but I think the only thing that matters is how you see it. It doesn't matter what the community thinks, even if they're racist. Mimi, down. <clears throat> like I was saying, it doesn't matter what the community thinks. Even if they're racist, like why are they racist? Because they lack education. Clearly somebody who's bold enough to be racist is not smart enough to know better. So just be mindful. Love yourself. Know that you were created exactly how you were supposed to be created. And avoid seeking validation from other flawed people who probably have similar insecurities, you know? There's too many good questions in here, but I'm gonna end it off on this question. Um, are you thinking of marriage anytime soon? Nah. Mimi, leave my food alone, please. Thank you. Um, I love this girl so much. I don't think y'all understand. Like she's so bad, but she like I couldn't accept this behavior from any other cat. Like it's cuz it's her that I let her get away with it. I love you, mama. Oh, I love her. Um, was it answer your question? What was the question again? Are you thinking of marriage anytime soon? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely thinking of marriage. I'm definitely in a place where if it comes, alhamdulillah. If it doesn't come, alhamdulillah. Don't start, don't start. Either which way, I'm grateful, but I'm definitely in a more ready, prepared situation than I have been in the past. I think if you asked me like a year ago or two years ago, I would say absolutely not, I'm not ready. I still have a lot of things I need to do, but I'm realizing like you're never 100% ready for anything. Like we are growing all the time and we never actually arrive, but we're always on the journey there. So there's no better time than when you feel, you know, you've done enough to be ready so I think I'm ready and I'd be happy for it to happen at any time but I'm not really actively looking actively searching I'm just kind of chilling living my life y'all if y'all say Mimi get out um so yeah open definitely open to it but it's all in God's timing ready Mimi Mimi need a pappy okay she need a dad so y'all keep me your duas, okay? But yes, you guys, the skin is still glowing. Shout out to the support products that we used earlier. Like I mentioned, everything will be linked down below in the description box. Make sure to shop. And I had so much fun with you guys today. I hope we can do more videos like this. Let me know if you guys would like me to elaborate on any of the questions or if I should just do more general Q and A's. And on that note, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Bye.